Good morning. Hello. Hi, Lawrence. Good morning. Good Mr. morning, Bong. Lawrence. Good what morning. What a lovely place. What a nice place mm. indeed. Yeah, we'll be heading over there to the uh, floating dock. Samong, so why and how did you get from banking to venture capital? I was raised by two extremely smart scientists. Uh, my father is the uh, member of the Academy of Science of China. Wow. And my mother invented China's first uh, novel biotech drug. They're scientists to start with, and both of them are very entrepreneurial. My father started translating his technology from lab to business when he was uh, 63. And my mother, being very competitive to my father, started her venture as well. So they are both scientists and entrepreneurs. But there's got to be an underlying reason. I see the entrepreneurial curiosity. But what triggered it? When I was 26, um, I was told that my grandfather, my grandfather on my father's side died of uh, colon cancer. So my parents being scientists, you know, made me go, you know, undergo colonoscopy every three years. So that was a ritual. And when I started working for Goldman Sachs, I was um, too busy. It was not, it's completely my fault, not Goldman's fault. <laughs> it was completely my fault. I uh, overlooked that. So there was a skip. And uh, in 2015, when I went back to go to do the test, the doctor told me that uh, I had the uh, tumor and uh, they need to cut off 10 or 50 inches of my intestines. And uh, post the surgery, um, the, to give them peace of mind, the surgeon said from visual, you know, by looking at the tumor, he felt it was benign, but he wasn't sure. I had to wait for the biopsy report to come back. So for three days, I was lying in a bed, playing doctors. Um, was target treatment available? I probably won't survive chemo. So I went through the, the despair of not, not knowing whether the uh, right treatment uh, was available to me or not. At the end, of the, the report came back. I was deca declared uh, cancer-free. I had a tumor. But uh, the three days of experience was quite daunting. And knowing how good you know my parents are in science and how advanced the science is today and knowing how hard an uh, entrepreneur had to beg for money mm -hmm. to find the right uh, investors to support them. That was the moment I said, okay, I'm quitting Goldman. Samung, that's really exciting. I know you brought your team out here, 15 of them, I saw them with all their laptops earlier. You had your weekly conference. I just learned that you were actually not just conferencing, you are using your AI platform, tracking 15,000 companies all over the world from this floating dock in the middle of a bay with the blue sky above us and a country park. What more can you say about the modern way of living and working? That's why we're here. We're not going anywhere. <laughs> Samung, thank you for bringing us to your office. Uh, we start off with the first time I've come into an office and I'm not greeted by a reception, but greeted by a Zen garden. So it's wonderful that we are starting here. Uh, in a minute, I hope we'll get a chance to walk around your office and uh, uh, see all the other exciting things ranging from state-of-the-art computing program to wonderful art collection. But starting here, uh, could you tell us about your company, uh, your vision, uh, the business objectives, and how do you go about uh, identifying companies? The VC firm is, is called Ori Capital, is established in, um, was established back in 2015. And the mission of the fund is to be financially successful and socially impactful by battling three largest diseases. Um, I think I told you earlier that um, in 2015, I had a healthcare scare 
I thought I might have colon cancer. It turned out to be a benign tumor. The mission of the fund is very clear, to be both. Is that one of the three diseases that you have set out to attack? Yes, the top three diseases are cancer um, and metabolic uh, conditions that will cause acute diseases, for example, heart attack and stroke. That's the second kind. The third kind of disease we focus is neurodegenerative diseases, such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's. To attack these three diseases, we focus on three uh, modalities. That is therapeutics, meaning drugs, and delivery, and diagnostics. And the reason we also focus on delivery, in addition to, to therapeutics, is because a lot of times, uh, systemic delivery will not do the job. It takes the, it needs the help of device to push through the last mile. And diagnostic is also very important because, you know, for example, um, in the case of cancer, cancer cell cells are like AI cells. So the earlier you catch them, the easier the chances to the chance of survival is 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 much higher. And the same applies to Alzheimer's. Following our focus, um, meaning the, the three diseases and three modalities, we identified about 20 scientific approaches. 20? Yeah, 20 ap approaches that can be used to treat uh, such diseases. And out of, the, um, out of the 20, we further zoom in about 10. Um, we think that are, that are maturing, that are investable, we call them 10 runways. Within these 10 runways, then we go to look for truly innovative companies that can come up at the end uh, an innovative uh, drug or delivery or diagnostic product to, at the end of their safe lives. Our investment team, which is composed of two parts, science part and the financial part. Both need to understand this Bible or handbook so well. And the Horizon helps keep this um, handbook alive. Because whenever new information with respect to the company, financing, technology, landscape you know, competition, will be built back, incorporated into this handbook. And that obviously it takes a lot of um, uh, human input, both from the, 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 the science team and from the uh, uh, finance team. Because there is a valuation section, there is a part that, that analyzes all the private companies, including some public companies, but mostly private companies, that support us to make investment decisions in the 10 uh, focus approach area. So for each important runway or key runway, we have a handbook. It starts from science and starts from, uh, goes moving down to key challenges because only if we understand the challenges well enough, then we will know what a winner should look like. Then from there, we map out the industry uh, landscape per science per or per challenges. We don't map it out per, per, per top line because we invest in early stage companies. So we have a different perspective looking into the industry competitive landscape. From there, we'll move down to valuation, and then we move to uh, uh, unearth the, the, the pool of especially private uh, companies, the, res the, the universe of private companies. And you can see this. To, so it's to, actually all to, driven to, by science. Yeah, it begins to, with, with a scientific science. topic. Yeah. Simone, you have given us uh, really great news that uh, there's an explosion of science and the further good news that Hong Kong's research is not behind, we're doing quite well. But where are the bottlenecks? When are we going to see all the things come to market and treating people? There is certainly an explosion of science, given Hong Kong has such high quality universities and research institutions. We have plenty of uh, fruits, but they are sitting in a lab. You know, you can imagine that um, those scientific breakthroughs will walk out of the lab and translate themselves. It will take a bold entrepreneur and his team. It will take bold venture capital investors to support a bold entrepreneur. With this combination, 
then you know new ventures can be born. The uh, uh, discovery work can continue moving on to clinical development, moving on to approval, and moving on to sales and marketing commercialization. So the missing link here in Hong Kong is um, we don't have enough bold VC investor yet. We have a very robust uh, exchange supporting the uh, companies to be listed in Hong Kong and therefore uh, being able to tap into a big reservoir of public funding. But these companies, before they go to the market, they have to start um, from venture stage. You're heavily involved in healthcare and biotech. How does our future look? In biotech? Yes. I think it's quite bright. Um, there is a common misperception that Hong Kong is small when measured against the uh, United States, Europe or China. But we need to put it into perspective because, you know, every city, every state in the U.S., every city, every province in China is strong in biotech or, or healthcare. There are few successful collectors in the U.S. that will be Boston, Bay Area, in China, it will be Shanghai, in Europe, London and Basel. So Hong Kong is a city as measured with these successful collectors. It's quite adequate. And measuring cluster to cluster, how do we compare? What are the things that you look for? I look for four things. First of all, the uh, future assets to be translated into um, actual therapeutics or delivery or drug or etc. Um, they would have to come from um, outstanding discovery work. And most of the discovery work is being done at the academic level. If you look at the the quality of our faculty, of our top-notch researchers um, at our universities or institutions, it's very high. It's out of this world, if I may say. That's number one. Number two element will be the ability to actually translate them. And we're talking about you know, going through regulatory approvals, and that means we have to establish global trials. And Hong Kong, you know, talents in Hong Kong are never inadequate in terms of going global. We have the big old China next to us and we can you know, establish a global trial that covered, that includes China, US, Europe, um, and Australia. It works in our favor, being international. So um, great hinterland yes. and international access. That's right. Um, that's what you need. Nowadays, most trials are global trials. And the third would be the, the, the support of the financial community. We have a great um, exchange that attracts um, innovative company to list in Hong Kong. The number, at, you know, the number is grow, growing at an alarming speed. You know, two years ago we barely had any uh, biotech company to list in Hong Kong. Now we couldn't have enough. Um, therefore, with this attraction, I'm sure the uh, enthusiasm in supporting. Uh, biotech industry will go from at the secondary level to primary level to even early stage at the VC stage. So that's a, the third element, the support money. of the yeah, money. Money, support money of, makes it all go the, around. Yeah, money mm -hmm. is, is, is part of the game, certainly. The, the, the fourth, but not least important, is talents, the talent pool. Both talents to support the startup companies, innovative companies to create new drugs, new therapies, and the uh, a talent to support the financial or investing community. If you look at our, our own staff at Ori Capital, I recruit the, um, uh, we have a very strong uh, science-driven methodology. Therefore, we have uh, in-house, our head of legal has a PhD degree in biology, and he is the young lawyer of Hong Kong for 2021. I met him earlier today. I was about to say he is really fun-loving, he doesn't strike me as a lawyer, speaking as a lawyer myself. Well, he's a PhD in biology. Exactly. <laughs> but somehow, somehow he just got astray. He became a lawyer, but he found you. So he's, he's back applying legal skills to, to science. Yes, he combines his legal science to early risk prevention. And we have a team of uh, four uh, scientists who specialize in specific approaches. 
Um, for example, one specializing uh, um, immuno-oncology, one specializing in NGS sequencing, gene editing, GP, uh, GPCR uh, uh, pathway, and, and, and RNA editing. All of them are products of Hong Kong. Wow, this is really Hong, heartening to know. products of Hong Kong, yes. I, I, I met all of them earlier. I didn't get a chance to speak to them about, about their background and their work, and you've just really excited me to go back and speak to them some more. Do I take it then that Hong Kong is decent enough for talent pool and, and yes. a place for you to find all these people? Decent enough to have the seat of um, to, the, to have the seat for innovation and to have the talent for you know financial for uh, funds like us to recruit. Uh, so what I count is research, global access, um, with also a hinterland in the mainland. Money makes the world go around and people make money goes around. That's right, absolutely. Simone, thank you for your time. We have talked a lot about Hong Kong today. I have learned a lot myself. If we have to use three words to describe this place, what would come to your mind? Creativity, connectivity and diversity. creativity. Look at the size of economy we have achieved. Hong Kong does not have natural resources. It has to be the uh, creativity of our people. The second word would be connectivity. And Hong Kong, you know, talents in Hong Kong are never inadequate in terms of going global. And the third word would be diversity. We celebrate uh, uh, different lifestyles. We even have diversity in food. And of course, we have diversity in our culture.